Directed score! Game seven! Montana St. Louis! We are going back to Tampa Bay! Oh, a Cavalier spinning. A Cavalier looking. Trying to drop it off. Brings it in himself. Left it in the middle. Shot! Phil, let me ask you, if you had to come up with your favorite Tyler Johnson memory during his time with the Lightning, what would that be? Um, well, I would say the 2015 playoffs. I mean, the entire playoffs, he was the best performer. And, you know, it sucks to see him go the way he did. But at the same time, like we mentioned before the show, like this is what kind of has to happen with you and no movement clause. Yeah, I mean, you know, for those who haven't heard and haven't seen our other video, which we're going to put in the uh, links in the description, as well as the uh, icon button, I believe it's up here. Uh, Tyler Johnson was waived yesterday. He cleared waivers, which means that he's still a part of the organization, but nobody wanted him for free, essentially, is what that means. But, uh, you know, it's tough. Uh, reiterate what I said yesterday. It's tough that uh, you know, the, his career had to end like this with the Lightning. Uh, hopefully it continues, and hopefully he's very successful with another team in the future. But, you know, um, I, I can't see him being in the minors next year. It doesn't really work out. I hope uh, that he finds another team. Um, and so, you know, that's sort of where the Lightning are. They made a couple of other moves. They saw some other people walk, and we're going to talk about that uh, here today on the Thunderstruck podcast. Uh, firstly, going to people who stayed, uh, two people re-signed. We had Patrick Maroon staying the Stanley Cup good luck charm, two years, $900,000, which means that the Lightning are going to win the next two Stanley Cups. I'm sorry, that's just how it works. And Luke Shen staying for one year at 800 k probably a depth role. I like both these signings. Yeah, I do too. You know, it's not a lot of money, um, which is something we don't have right now. So I'm not going to complain too much. Uh, like you said, maybe Patrick Maroon is the lucky charm because, I mean, he won with the Blues the year before and he won with us this year. So hopefully we get a four-peat. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hopefully we we have Stanley Cups in Tampa for years to come. Uh, but, you know, going from uh, team or players that stayed, uh, let's talk about some players that got their own. And, you know, we're very happy that they were able to help us win a Stanley Cup. And now they're going and trying to help their families uh, and get some money. Uh, first off was Carter Verhage, uh, who signed with Florida. It was a little bit surprising to see him not get a qualifying offer. But uh, I got to ask, is this a situation just like Jonathan Marshall show, where he didn't have a spot in the lineup? He was probably going to be a little bit too expensive during the cap crunch. And now he's going to flourish in Florida, just like Marcheseau did. Um, I don't think he has the same quality as Marcheseau. I think that he's a good player, but I don't think he's going to flourish as much as Marcheseau is. I mean, he, I think he's a good, you know, second, third line guy at most. But I don't think that he's uh, ultimate, you know, a 40 goal scorer like Marcheseau can be. Um, yeah. But other than that, you know, it, it's, it's nice for him to have a better a bigger role than what we could have given him um you know if he would have been playing for us he would have been a fourth liner maybe even scratched him nice like he was previously and that's not going to help his career at all so best of luck to him yeah best of luck indeed i would have loved to see a fourth line of him stevens and you know maybe ball call for maroon uh just you know get the kids out there if it's ball call for Hagee and stevens and just let them run because that's what they do. But he's going to have a, a great time in Florida. Uh, you know, the beaches down there are somehow even better than the beaches in, in Tampa. Um, you know, best of luck to Swaggy. Uh, you know, we, we're going to miss him. Uh, and another person that we're going to miss, I don't know if you're going to miss him because he's going from one of your teams to the other. Uh, Kevin Chattenkirk uh, signs with the Anaheim Ducks. 
uh, three years. Not exactly sure the AAV. I do apologize on that. Uh, a good deal for the Ducks. Um, and considering the the talent that they have on defense, you know, it it sort of parallels the Lightning where they can, you know, shelter him a little bit because as we know, his offense is there. His defense is a little bit flawed. Uh, that's my biggest concern as being a Ducks fan. Um, I saw him in Tampa and how well he does offensively. And he's kind of like a fourth forward out there. His defense is completely trash. I'm sorry, but it is. Um, but, you know, if you have the right setup guy, um, like I hope that uh, my Ducks will make him become, uh, you know, in three years, around $4 million bucks, uh, per year, I don't think that's too bad of signing for them. Yeah, I think it's a great signing. Um, you know, it's a little expensive for the Lightning. I, I don't think they would have been able to, you know, get that uh, almost $4 million AAV cap hit uh, on the books for three years, especially with the cap crunch. So, you know, good for the Ducks. They, they're they up and coming in terms of, you know, rebounding. Uh, they they really got to forward. They really got to concentrate on their forward depth now. Uh, but, you know, to focus on the Lightning for, for a little bit more, uh, after day one, you know, we saw a lot of minor league signings. Uh, we saw a lot of people leave. We saw some people stay, you know, the Tyler Johnson situation. Is there one move that you'd like to see with any remaining free agents? Uh, where did the Lightning go from here? Um, I don't know how much uh, Anthony Duclair would cost us, but I feel like Anthony Duclair would be a really good forward for us. Um, you know, he's speedy. He has the goal scoring ability. Um, but like I said, it depends on price. Uh, we're really strict. We're really kind of uh, strung up for cap right now. Um, you know, we, we have to basically trade out. But uh, we have, to, you know, there's talks about trading uh, Coburn even um, to trying to relieve some cap. But, uh, yeah, you know, if we can bring in Duclair, I think that would be a really good signing. Yeah, I mean, Anthony Duclair is always one of my favorite uh, players in the league to watch because he's so skilled. And, you know, Tortorella said once that, you know, he's not that good at putting his head in the game. But when he's there, he's he's one of the better, like, middle six forwards in the league, I believe. And uh, But if I had to choose a player, uh, and I've been on this train for a really long time, Vladdy, come home to Tampa. We want to see you back in a lightning uniform we we apologize for trading you away all those years ago uh come back take a take a discount you know the the three points that we were talking about jake and i in our free agency video warm weather jet skis and now stanley <laughs> cups you know the first two very very well from your time here let's go get that third one like I, I would be so happy if Vladdy came back, not only because I have his jersey, but because he is a really skilled player. And the fact that we might see him with Stamkos and Kucherov next year again, uh, I would I would be over the moon. Uh, you know, yeah, I, I love Domestikov. I think that would be a great signing too. And like I said, it, it all just depends on money, you know. Um, if, if Vladdy comes, like you said, with a discount, great. I would love the guy. You know, he's, he really is a, a good uh, player. Kind of like for Hagee, but he has more upside where he can play a second or third line role. Um, at, he's a pretty cheap deal, then I'm not going to complain whatsoever. Yeah, exactly. You could say that about any forward, though, any defenseman, any goaltender. If they're cheap, bring them to Tampa. If they're not, you know, we can't really afford them. Uh, you know, going from the Lightning uh, to around the league, uh, Tory Krug was the biggest signing of yesterday. Uh, with a seven-year, $6.5 million signing in St. Louis. Uh, this seems to be the end of Alec Petrangelo in St. Louis, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, I think that Tory Krug could be the missing piece on left defense that they need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, you know, Krug has a lot of uh, upside, especially offensively. Um and, you know, he, unlike mentioned, unlike Shattenkirk, who I mentioned earlier in this video, um, he has the defensive side to uh, really, uh, you know, excel. Um, so 
you know, you have those combinations and the Blues were kind of missing a puck moving defenseman, especially now that they're they're not going to be able to uh, reafford Petrangelo. Uh, obviously, for whatever reason, the talks between the two camps didn't work out very well. So I think that Krug is really going to fill a role there, um, especially since he's the left side compared to Petrangelo, who's a right side. Yeah, I, I totally agree. You know, St. Louis is going to be one of those really interesting teams to watch. You know, do they falter because of that first round loss to Vancouver? Do they succeed now that they have some new blood in there? Uh, what's the goaltending situation going to be like now that Jake Allen's gone? Um, it's it's going to be a, a lot of questions, uh, hopefully get answered uh, by the sort of midway point of next season. Uh, but going from St. Louis, and we'll get back to St. Louis in a little bit, uh, Florida was one of the biggest uh, teams in terms of movement uh, during the first day of free agency. Uh, Vinny Hestroza signed with Florida one year, one million. Uh, Alexander Winberg signed with Florida one year, 2.25 million. We already mentioned Carter Rahegi and Radko Gudis three years times 2.5. I know you mentioned yesterday that you were disappointed the Lightning didn't look at uh, Radko Gudis. Uh, I, I think, again, it comes down to price point. Lightning couldn't really afford him. Goes down to the lower part of the state. Florida says, we'll welcome you in with open arms. Yeah, um, I think that Radko Budis um, really gives you that defensive side um, of the game. So, I mean, if you would have been paired up with someone like Victor Hedman, who could have been up offensive, you know, up in the play, you could have had Radko Gudis kind of fall backwards. Um so that way he defends and, you know, you have Hedman up. Um, but yeah, like you said, uh, Florida is really moving up in the right direction. They don't have a lot of cap either, but uh, you know, you have to do what you have to do. Um, and, you know, they have, they have uh, a lot of, they're top, they were top heavy. Um, you know, you have uh, Barkoff and Huberdo and stuff like that, but they didn't really have anybody in between. Uh, and now I think they address that in the free agency. Yeah, and going from one team in the Atlantic Division that was a little bit cap crunch, we have two more. Uh, the first one, Boston, uh, three years, $3.1 million to Craig Smith. Uh, this is my favorite signing of free agency, and it infuriates me that it's Boston. Uh, Craig Smith is a very, very talented player. I know he's above 30. That is a bit of a warning flag, but, uh, you know, Craig Smith is a really talented player uh, and he's a very good uh, defensive player that can chip in offense. I love the signing for the Bruins, but I hate that it's the Bruins. Like you said, Craig Smith is a really good player. Um, he, you know, he can play wing, he can play center because he has decent faceoffs. Um, you know, it would have been nice. Like you said, it would have been nice if he came here, but at the same time, I don't know if we could afford him either. It's you know it's the same it's the same situation over and over again. You are we going to be able to afford people? Um, you know because we have two really noticeable uh, free agents right now coming up uh, that are restricted, and we've qualified them both luckily. But we have Sergachev and we have Sorelli, and that's where our money is going to go, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you want to look at it. Yeah, I mean you know why not sign? the older guys, why side and the younger guys? Like that is where the direction that the lightning are headed in. Uh, one more team in the Atlantic division in terms of, you know, no cap space, but still signing people. Uh, Wayne Simmons and TJ Brody are both heading to the Toronto Maple Leafs one year, 1.5 for Wayne Simmons, four years, $5 million for TJ Brody, uh, sort of an expensive contract for Brody. But at the same time, he fills, they both fill a need, uh, toughness for Wayne Simmons and a left-handed, right-handed defenseman, if that makes sense, uh, for the defense. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, TJ Brody is a really good, uh, kind of like I mentioned before, he's, he's a puck-moving defenseman that can play defense. Um, so that's kind of what, that, that's what they needed, um, especially with losing Tyson Berry. Um, we still don't know where Tyson Berry's going to go. Um, but, you know, Tyson, that fills a role there. And then you have uh, the grit that you have from Wayne Simmons, and he has a lot of playoff experience too. So maybe that'll help them uh, in next year's playoffs. Yeah, and, you know, Simmons is one of those people that's coming home. Barry or Brody is one of those people that's coming home, you know. Uh, 
I, I made the joke that like 85% of the league is from Toronto. So like, of course, when they sign with Toronto, they're going home. Uh, but uh, good, two good signings from them. We're going to transition over to some other teams that made some big moves. Uh, Calgary finally solves their goaltending problems. Uh, we saw last year in the playoffs, uh, they kind of imploded. And my initial reaction was, guys, blow up the team. Like, uh, it was uh, an implosion in game six. Uh, you shouldn't have lost to Dallas. We now know that that is a mistake because Dallas made it all the way to the Stanley Cup finals. But, you know, goaltending was their biggest need. They signed Jakob Marchstrom to a six times six contract. And, you know, bolster up defense. Chris Tanev, 4.5 times four. Um, big for Calgary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Markstrom is one of the most underrated goalies in the league. He play, the way he plays and his size is, it's, you know, it's, it's hard to say how good he is because, I mean, you know, he hasn't had the recognition, like the Vezina talk or anything like that. But I, I feel like he's one of those top goaltenders, kind of like a John Gibson, where he's right there. They just haven't had uh, uh, the marking that they need. Um, and then for, as far as uh, Chris Tanev, uh, you know, he, he did, did really well in Vancouver. Um, so the way, the way that he plays, I think is going to really fit in, um, in into Calgary as well. So hopefully for them that, that – that propels them to an, another run and hopefully they don't lose in the first round of, or second round, I guess you could say in the playoffs. Yeah. It's really weird to see uh, two players from the same team go to another team uh, at the same day at the same time, uh, unless it's in a trade, but you saw two free agents sign uh, with uh, Calgary uh, from Vancouver in a matter of hours. So, you know, uh, really uh, interesting dynamic there. Sticking with goaltending, there's a lot of goaltending to talk about. Uh, Corey Crawford, who was not given a contract by Chicago, that was a bit of a question mark uh, for the offseason, signs with New Jersey. Two years, th uh, $3.9 million per. Uh, we've been talking a lot about how the New Jersey goaltending has been a problem. You know, Mackenzie Blackwood was really good last year. Corey Schneider was not. Uh, he was actually pretty bad and got bought out. So, uh, you know, the fact that even though Crawford's older, they get that solid veteran goaltending makes them maybe into a playoff team next year. Yeah. Um, Corey Crawford is, uh, I feel like he's a little inconsistent, but when he's on his game, he's really on his game. Um, he does really well. And, you know, Corey Schneider didn't really plan out with, for them as well as they would have liked him to. Um, you know, he did well in Vancouver, but he got traded um, all those years back. And he hasn't really found his game, I don't think, since he since that trade. Um, and I don't, you know, I don't, I wouldn't be surprised if Corey Schneider just hangs up the skates. Um, I don't know if, how much longevity he has. Um, you know, he is older and his uh, performance is really going down. Well, he did say through his agent that he wanted to keep playing. So that was a positive sign for him. And I, I'm, I think the pause in the NHL season was the thing that he needed. You know, he's had all these injuries. He was really good for a time in New Jersey. I think it was just a factor of age and injuries catching up to him. But I think the pause in the NHL schedule, while it was, you know, not the greatest uh, thing for a lot of things in the NHL it was really good at helping people recover, uh, recuperate. And, you know, Corey Snyder was one of those. Uh, sticking with goaltending, once again, uh, we're going to go back to Vancouver, where Braden Holpe is taking over Jakob Markstrom's spot, uh, not necessarily as a starter, but at least on the roster. Two years at 4.3. Uh, this begs the question, though, uh, will Thatcher Demko or Braden Holpe be the outright starter, or will they split it 50-50 like we've seen with other teams do? I think that we're going to see a kind of a tandem. Um, you know, dep depending on the way Holpe plays, though, because we've seen the way that he played last year, and he didn't do that great for the majority of the year. Um, you know, that's where Samsonov really came in, and he took away his job. 
Um, so, you know, if he plays well, then I can obviously see that them doing a tandem because they really want Demko to be a starter. So, I, you know, it's only a matter of time before he becomes an actual starter. So I, I think for the first year, they do a tandem. And then the second year, maybe they move him as a permanent starter. Um, just so, so he gets his the feet under him. You know, he only he only really played, um, you know, in the playoffs this year. And he, I think he only had like one or two, maybe, during the regular NHL season. So, I, you know, if he plays the way he played in the playoffs, uh, I think that they have, they have a really good goaltender on their hands. And not only that, they have DiPietro coming up in their system too. Exactly. Michael DiPietro, one of the best goalies left in uh, the system for any team. Uh, and going from a team that saw their goaltender go to Vancouver, Washington said, okay, so we didn't want to pay Braden Holtby. Uh, we're going to bring in a stopgap. We're going to bring in Hendrik Lundqvist, the king one year, $1.5 million. Lundqvist can still go. I love this signing for Washington. It really gives them an opportunity at a cup uh, if they decide to try. I know that there was a bunch of stuff saying that they didn't really care in the bubble. Maybe this year is different. Uh, but him, Samsonov, I don't think they're going to be a tandem. I do think that Lundqvist is like the clear backup. But I, I love this signing for Washington. Yeah, it's a really good signing for Washington. Um, I was actually talking to my buddy who's a big kind of Caps fan, and he's really happy about the signing. Um, you know, it gives them a solid backup for uh, whatever reason. You know, if Samsonov can't play, if it's a back-to-back, -back, whatever. So it's going to be really good for them. Um, and uh, I, I think that's going to be a really good signing. Yeah, and then uh, one more uh, on the goaltending front. Uh, Matt Murray, who was traded on day two of the draft for a second round pick, signs with Ottawa now. Uh, the price, a little steep, if I'm going to be honest. Four years, $6.25 million per. Don't get me wrong. Matt Murray is a two-time Stanley Cup winning goaltender. Matt Murray has also struggled for the past few seasons. Uh, this is a boomer bust contract, I think. Yeah, exactly what you said. It's a boomer bust. Um, because the way that Mur we've seen Murray play on, like, again, you've seen Murray play the way he's been, been playing lately and you're concerned, but you've also seen him excel and, you know, he, he has that ability to do really well and be an elite goaltender in the league. So it, it, it depends which match, what, what, what Matt Murray you're getting. Um, you know, if you get, if you get the one that's on top of this game, the two times Stanley Cup champion, then you're getting value in that. But if you're getting someone who's been struggling and, you know, that's not something that you're going to want and that's something that you're really overpaying for. But I hope the best of luck to, you know, the Senators as they're starting to really rebuild their team. Yeah, they get that number one goalie now or they're paying him like a number one goalie. Uh, they got some fantastic prospects on the way. I, I do think, again, like I mentioned on the, the draft show, uh, the live stream that we did, they're one uh, really center away, number one, like a number one center away from really contending. So, you know, best of luck to the Senators. Not too much luck, though, because they're in the Atlantic Division, uh, and we want our Volts to win that every single year. Uh, looking forward uh, now to day two, which is still going on and beyond, a uh, couple big names are still on the market. Taylor Hall, Alec Petrangelo, uh, as you mentioned, Tyson Berry is still on the market. Is there one uh, like player that you'd be surprised to see them go, uh, you know, that they're leaving and that they're going somewhere else, like a Taylor Hall, or like an Alex Petrangelo. Um, not really. I don't think. Um, I, you know, I, I w I'm really amped up to see where those top end players go. Um, you know, free agency for me, just like trade deadline, is kind of like Christmas, like. I don't, I don't know. Like you, you never know what you're going to get. You never know what you're going to see. And, and it's just so interesting to watch, but I don't really have a person that I'm going to say, Oh, you know, I'd be shocked if this person leaves because I mean, in reality, I mean, anybody could leave a team. Yeah, you're exactly right. Um, you know, I am really uh, excited to see where those big time players go. Uh, I am fascinated to see who overpays for Taylor Hall. Uh, because I think that contract starts with the number nine 
And I think that is way too much money for Taylor Hall, even though he is an, an exceptional talent. Uh, and then once again, going back to what was, uh, what in your mind uh, throughout the first day and the uh, little bit of the second day that's gone on has been sort of the, the signing that, you know, might not be the most jumping off the page, but will lead to their team uh, succeeding. This I year. think that honestly, I, 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 you know, we mentioned him before. Uh, I think Markstrom is going to really excel in Calgary. Um, you know, it, it's like you said, it's jumping off the page a little bit, but at the same time, um, that's exactly what they needed for their team. They needed a starting goaltender. You know, Mike Smith, you know, they had Mike Smith, they had Cam Talbot um, a few years back, and it just wasn't, it just wasn't working for them. So, you know, it, eventually they have to move on and now they got an elite goaltender. So that team's going to be scary, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, he's going to be amazing for them. I, I think that Calgary, uh, even though I said that they should tear it down, uh, not even a month ago, uh, is proving me wrong. And I'm cool with that uh, now that they have uh, that elite goaltender for for sort of a, a low key free agent signing. I know I mentioned how much I loved Craig Smith in Boston. I got to go with the Vinny Henestroza going to the Florida Panthers. Uh, he was always one of those types of players that I love to watch on Arizona. You know, Arizona has this tight knit defensive system, but some of those players really stood out. You look at Clayton Keller, uh, you know, was one of the better players in the league, uh, even through that defensive system. It's a sink or swim system. You know, Taylor Hall failed. Phil Castle not doing that well. Vinny Henestrosa was one of those guys that I thought succeeded immensely. Uh, and I think he's going now to a team that will, you know, expedite his offensive strengths, uh, you know, let him play his defensive game, which we saw was really good in Arizona. And, you know, I think that could be a fantastic step signing for them. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, you know, Vinny Henestrosa is not a name that really jumps out. Um, but, you know, players like him or Connor Garland, in Arizona, that's the type of players that really excel in that system. Um, so, yeah, I think that's going to be a good one. Um, one other one that I, we mentioned earlier that I think is going to be good, too, is I think that the Wayne Simmons uh, acquisition in Toronto, I mean, that's exactly what they needed, too. Um, you know, they needed that grit. They needed that physicality. And they kind of got it with Kyle Clifford. But now they really have someone that can not only be physical, but can also score goals for you as well. Um, so I think that that's going to be a really good um, one that doesn't really jump off the page, but is a solid signing. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, free agency will continue. Uh, this video may be updated with uh, something uh, in the middle of it. Probably when I'm editing, uh, there's going to be some floods of news, which is just how the things go. Uh, but Phil, anything else for us today on this free agent episode? No, but I, I want to uh, congratulate the Rays really quick. Um, you know, we are Team Tampa Bay here, and you, they did they did uh, win their <laughs> yeah the exactly back there yeah <laughs> they did win their series, and they're going to face the, the cheaters, the Astros. So good luck to them. Yeah, good luck indeed. I'll be uh, rooting for them. Uh, you know, it is so nice to see some Team Tampa Bay success. The Lightning winning the Stanley Cup. And now the Rays possibly winning the World Series. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't be afraid to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And follow us on Bay underscore Bolt on Twitter for all your news and notes. And the game recaps will come eventually when the 2020-2021 season starts again. Uh, my name is Michael Wax. Join here with Philip Wonderlick. Guys, again, thank you so much for watching. And we will see you, hopefully, with the Lightning re-signing Anthony Sorelli, Mikhail Sergachev, and the rest of the RFAs soon. Take care, guys.